when it comes to the constraint optimization the hessian determinant changes a little bit and it becomes bordered hessian determinant this is actually the matrix version of the second order condition this is attributed to the german mathematician the name of who was whom was this and on the basis of his name we have the hessian determinants in this case we have a bordered hessian determinant because uh, there is a border of the constraint in the elements of it so this is the uh, alternative of the algebraic uh, version of the second order condition this is the objective function and this is the uh, constraint function we are representing the constraint with g and in the second order condition in matrix form we write it like this which is the bordered hessian you can see a small border above h this shows that this is not simple hessian this is bordered hessian and the border is visible here in the form of these elements because this was simple hessian however this border of these elements is uh, now introduced in it we can uh, uh, understand these four terms easily mm, if you don't remember you can refer back to the hessian determinant video in which we have understood these however these can be understood simply by uh, making sense of these uh, symbols that is it is the derivative of the constraint with respect to y and this would be the derivative of the constraint with respect to x so in this way gx and gy are these terms that we can understand very easily we will also do a numerical of it but before it we can try to put it in some sort of algebraic form this is actually the standard form of the uh, bordered hessian determinant and what we can observe here is that we have actually a 2 into 2 uh, uh, determinant that we will be solving at the end uh, because the first principal minor will disappear because if i try to focus on this uh, determinant that we have the first term that we have is zero so this will be the first principal minor that we know that is h 1 so h1 is already 0 so we will be depending upon the other values that is the value of h2 and then h3 so therefore h2 and uh, h3 these are the um, determ uh, determinants that will matter right now what we have done is we have exp uh, expanded this uh, 0 is here and then this uh, minor and then the uh, value of gx and then the related determinant and then gy and its related sub determinant so these are the sub determinants now solving this is not a difficult thing we have been doing such kind of algebra before this is this one this is the expansion of this one whole of it will disappear because there is uh, a zero getting multiplied with it so now you can uh, solve these uh, steps easily this is a diy you can pause the video here and see that how this simple um, set of uh, steps is done and now we are going to generalize this uh, bordered hessian to n number of variables where the uh, objective function as well as the constraint function are having n number of variables this is again represented with h bar the bordered hessian and it will look something like this 0 will appear and then uh, constraint derivative with respect to first variable constraint derivative with respect to second and finally with respect to the final variable so g1 g2 and so on this is all what we can see here and then we have this uh, uh, remaining uh, part which is actually the uh, hessian determinant in which we take the second order partial direct and cross derivatives and put them in their place again you can pause the video and see that how this generalization is done uh, finally the last um, the last minor is actually equal to the overall bordered hessian because it contains all of the terms and now we can also understand the minimum condition the maximum condition for minimum uh, they will be all negative all these terms 
and for maximum the sign will uh, will be alternative in nature as you can see the signs are reversing as we go to the next uh, uh, minor but this minus 1 raised to the power n is appearing with the final minor this we can explain this is being explained here if n is equal to 4 for example this is an even value of n the final minor will be a uh, here like this minus 1 raised to the power n n is equal to 4 so it becomes positive so it it is now positive it disappears because it reduces to 1 but if this is an odd value that is for example 3 you place it here and the answer would be a negative 1 which will appear here and the, you know this was positive and this will be negative uh, so this we can write as negative because we already know that it's going to be negative so this minus 1 was a good thing to have because it basically uh, retains the pattern that we are looking for that this should be negative and this should be positive the even and odd power is basically the phenomenon behind it and in case of even positive sign will appear in case of odd negative sign will be there now you can uh, do this numerical example this is again an easy thing to do once the uh, two functions are given that is the objective function and then the constraint function we will form the Lagrangian function here Lagrangian function is formed here this you can refer back to the previous videos in which we developed the Lagrangian function and then we also found the first order conditions here we found those three conditions with respect to x y and lambda that are equal to 0 and we can find the values for this bordered Hessian determinant because these variables can be easily found this is already 0 gx can be found by taking the derivative of g and that will be the derivative of this function g that is constrained with respect to x and if we take the derivative with respect to y it will become g y and you already know about these four because these are something that we did in the simple Hessian uh, determinants and that is already there in the previous uh, one of the previous videos so the values of g x and g y can be found by using the derivative of the constraint and the values of z x and all these values these four values can be found by taking the derivative of uh, or using these first order conditions now we after finding these values this is a small DIY for you so you have to do this and see if we get the correct answers these are the correct answers in my opinion we have substituted all these values and they are equal to minus 14 the derivative of it which is a negative value now I can make those minus this is the uh, to, uh, overall uh, determinant the bordered Hessian determinant here is the second minor uh, which is equal to this because the first one is always equal to 0 the answer of it is negative and the last minor the third minor is equal to the bordered Hessian naturally because it contains all of the elements of the bordered Hessian determinant and it is equal to minus 14 so both of them are negative it means that we are led being led towards a minimum uh, point so we are uh, getting the uh, minimization in this case and we have done it by using the bordered Hessian determinant there are economic instances of it that is two period uh, model of utility that is utility is a function of consumption in the first time period and consumption of uh, the uh, goods in the second time period so in this case we can uh, do the optimization because there are two independent variables and in the optimization the second order condition can be solved by using the bordered Hessian determinant the budget constraint should be given and this is how we can use this uh, tool of uh, bordered Hessian determinant to our advantage in our economic analysis where some 
constraint optimization is being conducted. Thank you.